Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the my.blogs demo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple Windows Forms application and use my.blogs to read as well as publish to blogs. So what I've got is a Windows application, uh, Windows Forms application that's called using my blogs. And I'm going to add the my.blogs functionality to it. And in order to do so, uh, I needed to install the my.blogs MSI that's included along with the my.blogs article. But after installing it, I have the ability to right click and say add new item and select the my.blogs template, which will add a reference to the myblogs.dll as well as the wire up code in order to extend my. So I'll select under my templates, my.blogs. And let's take a look at what it's done to my Windows Forms project. I've got a reference to the my.blogs DLL and a my.blogs.vb file that actually includes the uh, extension of the my namespace to include my.blogs. But what I need to do first is add a reference to that DLL that's been included in my project. So I'll double click on my project, references, and then click add. And I'll go browse and I will add a reference to the DLL that was been included in my project directory. Okay, let me close that. And now let's take a look at the myblogs.vb file that was added to my project. What this file includes is the code that actually extends the my namespace to include the blogs property. So how do I do that? Well, first, I put my code in a namespace statement, including namespace my, and then I use the global.microsoft.visualbasic.hide module name attribute to hide the module um, from the namespace hierarchy. So I'll be able to say my.blogs and access the blogs property that I've created. So again, to provide the blogs functionality, I'll create a property called blogs that returns an instance of a class called blogs. And that class is actually uh, part of the DLL that was added to my project. And I'll need to create a module level variable called underscore blogs as a new thread safe object provider of type blogs. And what this does is gives each request a thread safe instance of the blogs class itself. So by adding this code to my project, or more explicitly, by using my.blogs that added this code to my project, I have the ability to now say my.blogs and access any of the functionality that's included in the blogs class. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by using my.blogs. I'll go over to my form, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a data grid view onto the design surface along with a button and then start writing some code against those two controls. And one of the cool things about my.blogs is that all the collections within my.blogs are implementations of binding list, and that gives you the ability to bind any of the collections to something like a data grid view. So let me just take a data grid view and drop it on the design surface. And I'll position it on my form up towards the top. And then let's go ahead and throw a button on there. So we can write a little bit of code behind it. First, let's go ahead and change the name of the grid. and change a couple of properties to make it react the way we would like it to. So I'll change allow user to add rows to false, add allow user to delete rows to false. I'll make the grid read only and make it so you can only select one row at a time. So read only is true. And then selection mode is set to full row select. Okay, so that's my grid. Let's write a little bit of code against this button. So on the button one underscore click event, what do I want to do? Well, first let's go ahead and just read some entries from a blog. 
and I'll do so by just saying, you know, dim my feed as my blogs dot feed. Okay, so I'll create an instance of the feed class, which represents an RSS feed that I'll be able to read via my.blogs. I'll say my feed equals to my.blog. So there you can see the extension of the my namespace to include the blog functionality, dot read. And read has a, well, three overloads. You have the ability to pass it the URL as a string, so the endpoint, the RSS endpoint that you'd like to read blog entries from, whether you'd like to download comments for those individual entries, and then a subscription date. So if you want to um, only include, you know, blog entries from a particular date onward, you can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say HTTP blogs.msdn.com slash vbteam rss.aspx. Okay, so I'm going to use the um, vbteam blog in order to read the entries. I'm actually going to download the comments because we'll be using them later. And then let's say I want to only get the entries since, let's say, July 1st. Okay. And again, the collection that I'll get back, or actually the feed object, has a collection, a bindable collection called entries uh, hanging off of it. So I can use that to bind directly to my data grid. So I'll say me dot blog entries dot data source is equal to my feed dot entries okay so you can see a couple of cool things here one is the my blogs uh, namespace provides you all of the support classes you need for reading blogs and then the my dot blogs namespace itself provides incredibly helpful and straightforward methods like my dot blogs dot read to read um, uh, an RSS feed and get the individual entries and do something interesting with them. Like here, we're just binding them to that data grid view. So let's hit F5 and see what that looks like. So here's my application. The UI is not incredibly sophisticated, but it will get the job done. I'll click on the button. And there you go. So here are all the entries since July 7th for the VB team blog. Okay, so you can see here's the title of the blog, here's the title of each entry, and then here's the markup that actually makes the entry itself. Okay, so with just a couple of lines of code, I was able to read the entries from an RSS feed and bind them to a grid within my UI. Pretty cool. But since I've got the ability to read in the comments as well, because remember, the second argument in my.blogs.read is the ability to read comments, why don't I go ahead and bind those to the UI? So what I'll do is I'll go back over to my form. Let's just expand it to get a little bit more real estate. Move the button down. And let's grab another data grid view. Okay, I'll drop that on the surface. And let's just shorten that up so it doesn't obscure the button. Okay, and let's change some properties on this guy as well. Let's call it blog comments and just change it so it reacts like the other grid, you know, being read-only and only selecting rows and stuff like that. Now let's go back to our code. So what I'm going to do first, since I'm going to reference 
this particular variable from two different events, I'm going to make it a module level variable. So I'll change it to private and move it out of the button click event. And then what I'm going to do is every time someone selects a feed entry within the first grid, I'm going to populate the second grid with all the comments that are associated with that particular feed entry. And again, the support classes in the my blog the namespace gives you uh, the hierarchy of classes so you can surf from an individual entry down to its individual comments. Okay, so let's go to the blog entries, data grid view, and select the selection changed event. Okay, and then within that event, what do I need to do? Well, I need to figure out which particular which particular entry they clicked on, and then go ahead and find uh, the comments associated with that particular feed entry. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So let's say dim selected entry as my blocks dot feed entry. Okay, so talking about the individual feed. We'll set that equal to my feed dot entries dot or entries and then give it an index and I'll use the blog entries dot current row index to get that individual entry from the entries collection. And then from there, I'll just need to make sure that there are comments, and if there are, I'll bind those comments to that other grid. So if selected entry dot So if the selected entry dot comments collection is not nothing, then I'll say me dot blog comments dot data source is equal to and I will just set it to selected entry dot comments dot entries okay so pretty straightforward since I have the individual entry itself I can get from the entry to the comments associated with that entry okay so let's go ahead and hit F5 let's take a look at the uh, code running I'll click the button, and then again, it'll go to the VB team blog, get all of the entries. And then as I select the individual feed entries, I can see the comments associated with that entry. Okay, so pretty cool. With just a couple of lines of code, I was able to take an RSS feed, read it into my application, and then bind it to a grid, as well as binding the comments associated with each individual entry within that list of feed entries, and bind those to a grid as well. So again, just a couple of lines of code, everything's data bindable, so it's very, very easy to get into your application. And you don't have to be you know, incredibly well versed in making HTTP calls, or RSS, or anything along those lines in order to get blog functionality within your application using my.blogs. Okay, so that's reading. Well, it makes sense that we'd also want to publish to a blog. So I've got a test server set up here with a blog that I use for testing my.blogs. So I'll just take the URL from that blog and I'll go back to the application, drop another button onto the form and then use that to publish. Okay, so behind the button click event, I'm just gonna say my.blogs.publish entry. Okay, and the first thing that it expects is a published format, and right now we support two. So if you're using community server, um, we can actually post to the community server just from you giving us the URL of the blog that you'd like to write to. If you're using a different server that supports the Meta, Meta Weblog API, 
you can go directly against that service endpoint just by providing it the URL itself. Um, and then this sample provides a, a very easy way to extend MyDot blogs to allow you to publish to other servers and other APIs uh, just by extending the code that's already there. So I'm going to actually use the community server API and I'll go against my blog and I've used my.settings to store my username and password account. information and my blog entry itself won't be incredibly interesting for the title and for the description I'll just pass it test okay so one line of code to publish to a blog using my.blogs let's go ahead and run it and then click the button Okay, we'll go back over to the server, hit F5 to refresh the page. It'll take a second for the server to refresh, but there we are. So you can see here's my entry test posted on Wednesday, December 14th at 2.50 p.m., 2.58 p.m. So again, one line of code, I was able to publish to a blog using my.blogs. So very, very straightforward, reading from blogs, writing from blogs, all the source code is included. So you can you know, go through the code, learn how RSS feeds work, learn how the code gets the, the individual job done, extend it, use it in your applications, whatever you'd like. Lots of fun, very straightforward. There's also some great sample apps that are included with my.blogs as well. So take a look at those so you can get in a good idea of what it's like to use my.blogs in a Windows application, a web application, an Outlook add-in, whatever you'd like. There's some great samples, so take a look. Thanks.